Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is charging by induction. And here's what we wish to learn. What is charging by induction and how does it occur? And how can the results of charging by induction be predicted and explained? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In two previous videos of this tutorial series, these, I discuss two topics of importance to understanding charging by induction. One is polarization and the other is conductors and insulators. If you need to review those videos before watching this one, you'll find links in the description section below. I'm going to review them real quickly. Polarization is the act of separating into opposites. When it comes to charge, that means separating an object into a positive and a negative side. A charged object can easily polarize a neutral object. The charged object forces electrons within the neutral object to move from one side to the other. In the case of a positive balloon brought near a neutral conducting sphere, electrons within that neutral sphere are drawn towards the positive balloon. This causes the side closest to the balloon to be negative and the side furthest from the balloon to be positive. This is a polarized neutral conducting sphere. In the case of a negative balloon brought near a neutral conducting sphere, we would notice electrons moving from one side to the other again, but this time in the opposite direction as they are repelled by the negative balloon. So electrons move within the neutral conducting sphere from the left side to the right side, thus causing a polarization of the sphere. Polarization occurs much readily in conductors than it does in insulators. And that's because conductors allow for the free flow of electrons across their surface. And so they can gather up on one side or the other when induced to move by the presence of a nearby charged object. Charging by induction is one of several charging methods that are used to charge a neutral object. The procedure goes something like this. First, you start with a charged object, which we'll call object A. It's the positively charged balloon that you see. It's brought near a neutral object, which happens to be the gray sphere sitting up on an insulating stand. We'll call that object X. While object A is held near object X, a third object's brought nearby. It's the finger or hand that you see. We'll call it object G, where it stands for the ground. Then it is touched to object X, and finally object G is pulled away. And at that point, you would observe that object X has become charged. And the result of this charging process is that the charge on object X would be the opposite of the charge that object A has. So in this case, object X would become charged negatively. Two important things to note here. First, there's never any contact made between object A, the balloon, and object X, the sphere. Second, the only contact that ever is made here is between object G, the hand, and object X, the sphere. To understand the charging by induction process, you have to think in terms of two steps. In the first step, the polarization step, a charged object is brought near the neutral conducting sphere. That positively charged balloon is there to polarize the neutral conducting sphere. Electrons within the sphere, which are charged negatively, are drawn towards that positively charged balloon and migrate across the surface of the balloon to get closer to the positively charged balloon. This is just opposites attract. At the end of the polarization step, the neutral conducting sphere has negative charges lined up on the left side and positive charges on the right side. The second step is the charging step. That's when the hand comes in and touches the right side of that neutral conducting sphere. And the result is that electrons within the hand are drawn in to the right side of the sphere, neutralizing the positive excess charge that's there. That also is opposites attract. It's at this point when the sphere has gained charges, electrons, from the hand that it acquires a negative charge. Now what would happen if this balloon that we've been talking about is charged negatively? If object A is charged negatively, then that means that object X is going to acquire a negative charge. How does it happen? We can explain it once more in two steps, with the first step being the polarization step. The negatively charged balloon forces electrons within that sphere to be repelled away from it, and they move from the left side of the sphere to the right side of the sphere. That leaves an excess of positive charge on the left side of the sphere, an excess of negative charge on the right side of the sphere. The second step is the charging step, and that's when the hand comes in and touches the sphere. And now at this point, electrons will leave the sphere and enter into the hand. They're pushed out by the repulsions they experience with that negatively charged balloon. This charging step leaves the sphere charged positively since it's lost the negative electrons. 
A common lab in a physics class is the electrophorus lab in which you charge an electrophorus plate by induction. We're just going to call that electrophorus plate an aluminum pi tin because that's what's usually used. So we're going to bring a neutral aluminum conducting pi tin near a negatively charged foam plate. The presence of the negative charge in, on that foam plate forces electrons in the pi tin to be repelled from the bottom of the pi tin up to the top of the pi tin, thus polarizing the pi tin. That's step one, the polarization step. The next step is the charging step, and that's when a ground or hand or finger comes in and touches the pi tin. And when contact is made, electrons leave the pi tin and travel into the hand. They're still being repelled by the presence of this nearby negative foam plate. Like charges, like an electron and a negative foam plate, will repel one another. So electrons exit the pi tin into the hand. Because the aluminum pi tin has lost electrons, it becomes charged positively. Now we're going to discuss a slightly different induction charging situation. In this situation, we're going to bring a positively charged balloon near a system of two neutral conducting pop cans that are touching one another. As we bring that positively charged balloon near the can on the left, which is called can X, electrons in the can on the right, can Y, are drawn towards that positively charged balloon. That's opposites attract. The electrons leave can Y and enter can X, leaving can X with an overall negative charge and can Y with an overall positive charge. Then in the next step, we simply separate the cans. And now X has a permanent negative charge and Y has a permanent positive charge. This would be called induction charging. And using our original model, the balloon is this object A, can X is object X, and can Y would be called object G. Let's talk about a very similar situation, but this time with the balloon being negative charged. When the balloon is negatively charged, it works a little differently. Electrons in can X sense the presence of that negative balloon, and they don't like it. So they move out of can X into can Y. That's no magic. That's just the old electrostatic principle that like charges repel. A negative balloon and negative electrons in can X repel one another. That means those electrons scatter into can Y. That leaves can Y with excess negative charge and can X with excess positive charge. Then the cans are separated. And when they do, we observe that the can on the left, the can X, has an is positively charged and can Y is negatively charged. In our discussions of charging by induction, I've been referring to the hand as the ground. What is a ground? Well, the ground is simply an object that serves as a source or a sink for electrons. You can think of it as either a faucet or a drain. If electrons are flowing into the neutral object X, then you can think of the ground as being the faucet from which the electrons flow. But if electrons leave object X into the hand, you can think of the ground as being the drain into which electrons flow. So which is it in any given case, and how do you tell? Well, it comes down to old electrostatic principles of opposites attract and likes repel. See, electrons are negative, and if a positive object is held nearby, then that's opposites attract. That's a negative electron will be attracted to the positively charged balloon. So that's where the hand acts as the sink or as the source, and electrons flow from the source into the object X, the sphere. And that causes object X to be charged negatively. But if you have a negatively charged object held next to the neutral sphere, electrons in the sphere see it and they say, oh, I'm negative. Oh, that's repulsive. And they're repelled out of the sphere into the ground. And that causes the sphere to become charged positively as a result of the loss of its electrons. In this situation, the ground is acting as the sink. Now, the best grounds are large enough to contain a lot of electrons and spread them out as far away as possible. That makes one of the best grounds around the ground or the Earth. It's at this time of every video that I try to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like or subscribing to the channel or even leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four items that you can find on our website. Links to each of these items can be found in the description section of this video. Any one of them would be great follow-ups to this video on charging by induction. So pick one that suits your need and give it a try. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. My name is Mr. H and thank you for watching.